Hello students, welcome to mathematics class. Today the chapter that we are going to discuss is statistics. So first of all, let us see what is statistics. Okay. So for that, I am referring to your book only. Every day we come across a lot of information in the form of facts, numerical figures, tables, graphs, etc. These are provided by the newspapers, television, magazines, and any other communication or social media. These may relate to cricket batting or bowling and the profits of a company, temperature of the cities, expenditure in various aspects of the government and the polling results and so on. Now these are the facts or figures which are numerical or otherwise collected with a definite purpose are called data. Now our world is becoming more and more information oriented. Every part of our lives utilizes data in one form or the other. So it becomes essential for us to know how to extract meaningful information from such data. This extraction of meaningful information is studied in a branch of mathematics and that branch is called statistics. Now in this case we have already discussed the term data. Now this is not a new term, that's a new one, not for you, but you have already come across this word data or data handling in earlier classes also. Now in case of statistics, we use the data in two different forms. One is called the primary data, another one is the secondary data. Now just let me give an example. When I ask you to find the height of 20 children in your class, so what do you do? You go to each one of you and ask their height and make a note. So you are collecting the data in the form of primary data. Now this data is collected by the person himself. So that is why it is called primary data. Now data is categorized into two types, primary data and secondary data. So I give an example to understand the both of them. Okay. First of all, if I ask one of you to collect and find out the height of 20 children in your class, what do you do? You go to all 20 children, ask their height, note it down and then come to me. Now I got the information which is collected by the person himself. This kind of data when the person is Finding out himself or herself is called primary data. Now the other way, if I ask you to find out the number of absentees in your class today, then what do you do? You do not go to the classroom and find out who all are absent or who all are present. Instead of that, you go to the class register and find out how many are absent from there. So your class register is the reliable source. Now the kind of data that you are getting from a reliable source is called secondary data. So students, the next part is presentation of data. Okay? Now here again in statistics, data is categorized into three types. Okay? Let me write them. They are raw data. Then grouped data and classified data. Now to explain that, I will be giving you one example from your book. The example one from your book, it says consider the marks obtained by 10 students in a mathematic test as given below. They are 55, 36, 95, 73, 60, 42, 25, 78, 75 and 62. So these are the total marks obtained by 10 students are given to you. But if I ask you to find out who has got the lowest mark or the, you can ask the lowest mark of the class or the highest mark of the class. So how can you find it out from here? So for that you have to look at all the numbers for a while 
you have to check which number is the lowest one and which number is the highest one and this is not an easy job all of a sudden you cannot answer that means in other way we can say that these numbers are not giving me any information which is important in statistics so for that what we do we write them in the ascending order so we will discuss about it but for that let me write the numbers in the ascending form in the board okay now i have written the numbers in the ascending form just check here i have written 24 which is the lowest one first and then 36 42 55 60 62 73 75 78 and 95 now if i look at it i can find out easily which number is the smallest one this is number 25 and the number which is the highest one which is number 95 so this is giving me the correct information of the class who has got and how much they all have got so we can find out from here the details of the class so this is giving me the data or we call it this is the raw data now we come to the next example example 2 which is a example of your group data now the example says consider the marks obtained out of 100 marks by 30 students of class 9 of any school and the marks are given below they are 10 20 36 92 95 40 and so on now check here one thing then some of the numbers are being repeated here the number 92 is repeated the number 88 is also repeated 60 repeated thrice then number 70 is repeated and so on now in such cases we cannot arrange them in the ascending order yes of course we can but then there will be repetition in them so what we do we make a group of all of them okay okay so for that this group data i will be writing in the tabular form in the board now look at the table that i have made from that example okay now see the number the marks 10 which was achieved by only one student of the class so i have written one for that now the marks 20 was also achieved by only one student in the class so i have written one here next number 36 this side we have written all of them in the ascending form next number 36 which is being achieved by three students in the class so i have written three here since in the this column is for the number of students achieving those marks similarly for 44 because four children got 40 then 50 three three children got 50 then 56 two of them got 60 four children 74 72 1 and so on now here what i have done i have made it a group that means it's a group of this children who got similar kind of marks 36 was achieved by 3 so this is a group now the number 40 was achieved by 4 so this is another group now this kind of table is called your group data because i have made a group of all the marks which was achieved by all the students in the class now here these are called the marks that we got and this here this numbers the number of students or the number of participants in each group they are called frequency so till now we have seen what is our raw data is and what is our grouped data is now we come to the last part that is your classified data for that i go to that example 3 of your book please read it is 100 plants each were planted in 100 schools during one mahotsa after one month the number of plants that survived were recorded they are as follows please see they are 95 67 28 32 65 and so on all 100 numbers are given to you okay for this we cannot make a group of all because it will be too big or too long to simplify or to get any information from that 
So for that we make another table of class or classified frequency or classified data. Now with refer to the last example, I have drawn this table of frequency distribution. See here, I have already made the class in this manner. So all the numbers from 20 to 29 are being included here. And we found that in this class, we have only three schools who are survived the number of plants that is between 20 to 29. Next category I have made of 30 to 39 and here we have seen there are 14 schools who are between 30 to 39. For next class 40 to 49 there are 12 schools, 50 to 59 there are 8 schools and so on. Now along with this I have drawn the tally marks for the frequencies also. So for 3, here 3, 14 this is the one for 12. 8 and so on. Now this is called a classified data or this one is called a classified frequency distribution table. Here this is called the class. The numbers which we have divided are 20 to 29 are called class and the difference between them that is 20 to 29. So we can write 29 minus 20 which is coming as 9 and this 9 is called the class width, class width. So this is a new term that is called your class width. Now the difference between the classes, they are called the class width. Now I have found the difference between them in this manner, 29 minus 20, 9. Now this 9 is called the class width. Now check here, all of them are having the class width 9. And one more thing, please note, in every class interval, we, the first one number is called the lower limit and the last number is called the upper limit. So this example of classified data we have already done. I hope it is clear to all of you. Now we come to another example. Next example, it gives the details of the weight of the number of children in the class. Now there are total 38 children in the class and the weights are categorized in the form 31 to 35 there are 9 children, 36 to 40 in kgs, there are 5 children, 41 to 45, 14, 46 to 50, 3, 51 to 55, 1, 56 to 60 is 2, 61 to 65 is 2, 66 to 70 is 1 and 71 to 75 is also 1. This table is already given to you. Now suppose two new students have joined the class and their weights are 35.5 kg and 40.5 kg. So they are not coming into any one of the groups. Neither in the first group nor in the second group nor in the third group. The first group is between 31 to 35 kg. So 35.5 kg cannot be included in that. Now next group is from 36 to 40 kg. So we cannot include that 35.5 also. So what we do in that such cases? We make a new class interval so that we can fill up the gaps between 35 to 36, 40 to 41, 45 to 46 and so on. So we make a gap, there is always a gap between 35 to 36, 40 to 41, 45 to 46 and so on. So for that we make a new class interval to fill up these gaps. To overcome that problem, I have drawn a new class interval for this. Now the system for that is such as, here we have the number 35 as the upper limit of the previous class and the number 36 as the lower limit of the next class. To fill up the gap between them, this 35 and 36. Now see, the difference between 35 and 36 is 1. So the middle value will be 0 0.5 or we can say 1 by 2. So what I do is I add that 0 0.5 this side and subtract that 0 0.5 from this side. 
As a result, I get 35.5 here as the upper limit and this side when I subtract 0 0.5 from 36, I get 35.5. Similarly, I add 0 0.5 to 40 and the upper limit becomes 40.5 and here the 41 minus 0 0.5 is giving me 40.5. Similarly, I do the same thing with all the upper limits and all the lower limits. Now see earlier we had the first lower limit 31. So when I subtract 0 0.5 from there, I get 30.5. Now all of them, look at them, they all are connected to each other. So I can say 35.5 up to this limit. Now 35.5 to 40.5 and there is no gap between the two classes here. So here we can include the new two children. One was of weight 35.5 kg. So he can be included in the second one. So here the frequency will be 6 now because we are including the weights 35.5 here. And the next children whose weight is 40.5 kg will be included in this group. So now instead of 5 plus 1, the frequency of this group will be 6 and the frequency of the third group will be 15. Now as a result, the total number of children in the class will also be increased to 40. Okay. So now we will be doing the exercise 14.1. Question number 1 says, give 5 examples of data that you can collect from your day to day life. So what are the examples we can collect from our life? First of all, one example I have already given you, you can ask the height of 20 of your friends. Similarly, you can also ask the number of brothers or siblings they are having in their family. Then you can also ask for the number of plants they are having in their house and so on. So this way you will have to find out 5 examples of data that you can collect from your neighborhood or from your schools. Now the second question says that classify the data in question number 1 above as primary or secondary data. This also I have already explained you which ones are called primary and which ones are called secondary data. So you can find out the one which are you are finding out from your friends or from your neighbors that is your primary data and the one which you are gathering from your newspaper or any other sources, reliable sources, they are called your secondary data. So what the five examples that you have already found out, please classify them as per that, whether they are primary or secondary. Next is exercise 14.2. Now till now we have found out what are raw data grouped data and classified data. So this exercise is based on all of this. The question number one says the blood group of 30 students of class 8 are recorded as follows. Okay. They are A, B, O, O, A, B, O, A and so on. Now the question says represent this data in the form of a frequency distribution table. Now which is the most common and which is the rarest blood groups among these students. So for that we need to make a table. So let me do it now. So this is the table I have made here. You can see here. This side I have made the column with the blood groups. So there are four blood groups where they are in the list. They are A, B, Z, O and A, B. And this side I have calculated the number of children in each group. Now A, I have seen that there are total 9 children with group A and total 6 children with group B, 12 with O and 3 with AB. Now the question they are asking is which is the most common, first question, which is the most common. Now check here, the maximum number of times, that is 12 number of times the group O has appeared. So we can say that. Group O is the most common 
and next question is which is the rarest blood groups among this now here the least number of times we have got is 3 and this is for AB so we can say that AB is the one which is the rarest blood group among all these 4 ok next is the question number 2 that says the distance in kilometer for 40 engineers from the residence to their places of work are given. Okay. So, the total of 40 numbers are given to you and you have to construct a grouped frequency distribution table with class size 5 for the data given above. And then taking an interval of that is also given to you that is 0 to 5. So, 5 not to be included. So, as per that I have taken the class interval as this way. This is the distance. So, 0 to 5 but in this group I am not going to include the number 5 that means we will include 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. The number 5 will be included in the second group 5 to 10 but in this group the number 10 will not be included. Similarly all these groups up to 35 because the highest number we are having here is 32 that is why the last group will be 32, 35. Now, I will find out how many are there in each group. Okay. Now, in the group 0 to 5, just see how many are there. First number 5, we cannot include. The next is number 3, which will be included. Then, in the second line, at the last, we have 2, that will also be included here. Third line, the number 3 will be included. And again, in the third line, last column, we have 3, that will also be included. And in the last line, we have 2 that will also be included. As a result, we are getting 5 numbers in the first group. Similarly, in the second group, 5 to 10, here the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 will be included. So, from here, I will take that number 5, I will also take 7, then I will take the number 7 from the third line, then 9, then 7, then 8, then 5, and then in the last line, I will take 9, 6, 7 and 6. As a result, I am getting 11 numbers. Similarly, I have made the frequencies of each class. And always note, the total should be is equal to 40 as it is given in the question that there are total 40 engineers. So, do not forget that the total or the frequencies should always be equal to the number given to you. Next is question number 3 of exercise 14.2. The question says the relative humidity in percentage of a certain city for a month of 30 days was as follows. So, it is given in the range of 98.1, 98.6, 99.2 and so on and the last one is 89. Now, they asked you to find out first bit the construct a grouped frequency distribution table with classes 84 to 86, then 86 to 88, etc. So, the class intervals also they have already mentioned for us. The second bit is which month of or season do you think this data is about? Third bit is what is the range of this data? So, let me do it. First, we will make the grouped frequency distribution table with the data given to us. Okay. So, this is the grouped frequency distribution table I have made for question number 3. So, as the question was given according to that I have made the class interval as 84 to 86, 86 to 88, 88 to 90 and so on until I have taken up to 100 because we have some numbers where we are having 98.3 in the last line. To include that I have taken 98 to 100. Now, similar to the previous sum, now let me find out how many numbers are there in this range. Now, 84 to 86. Here, we are having total only one number. Similarly, in the second range, we are having 86 to 88. Here also, we are having only one number. And in the range 88 to 90, we have 2. 90 to 92, we have 2. 92 to 94, we have 7. And then 6, 7 and 4. Here also for checking, we have done that. The last one, the total is 30. So, our frequency table is 30. Now, the second bit is asking which month 
or season do you think this data is about? Now since here the humidity is the highest, we can see humidity is highest here. So we can assume that this is the month of any summer. Third bit is what is the range of this data. Now here we have made the class width of 2 and the range we have gone from 84 to 100. Next question number 4 of exercise 14.2. The question says the heights of 50 students 50 measured to the nearest centimeter have been found to be as follows. So they have given a list of the heights of all 50 students. Then they ask bit 1 represent the data given above by a grouped frequency distribution table taking the class interval as 160 to 165 then 165 to 170 etc. And the second bit says what can you conclude about their height from the table. So let us make the table first. Okay. So this is the grouped frequency distribution table for question number 4. As it is given that the class interval should be from 160 to 165 and so on. That is the width of 5. I have started from 150 because I have the lowest number as 150 also. So 150 to 155, then 155 to 160, 160 to 165 and so on till I have taken 175 because we have a number 173 also. That has to be included. Now in this group 150 to 155 I found total 12. Then 155 to 160 we have total 9 children and between 160 to 165 14 children and so on. For here also to be sure I have added them all and got 50. As in the question also it is given there are total 50 students. So this is your bit number 1. Second bit they are asking what can you conclude about their height from the table. So we can come to the conclusion that 14 is the highest number of people that means the highest number of children in this class they are of height 160 to 165. Next is question number 5 of exercise 14.2. Here also we have number of data given to us and they asked us to find out first bit make a grouped frequency distribution table for this data with class interval also given to us as 0 0.00 to 0 0.04 and then 0 0.04 to 0 0.08 and so on. And the second bit they asked for how many days was the concentration of sulfur dioxide more than 0 0.11 parts per million. So let us make the table first. So this is your grouped frequency distribution table. So as per the question I have made the class interval as 0 0.00 to 0 0.04, 0 0.04 to 0 0.08 and then up to 1 to 1 2 to 1 6, 1 6 to 2 0, 2 0 to 2 4 so that we can include all the numbers and the frequencies as we have calculated are in the first group in the first class we are having total of 4. And in the second we have 9, third we have 9, fourth we have 2, then 4 and then 2. Again to make sure we have added them all and we got the total as 30. That means we have included all of them. This is your first bit first. Now the second bit of the question was that for how many days was the concentration of sulphur dioxide was more than 0.11. Now since it is more than 0.11, so we are not taking up to this, we are coming to this portion because here the upper limit was 0.12 and that will not be included. So it will be only 0.11 will be included here. But we want the sulphur dioxide to be more than 0.11. So we come to this group. So 0.11 they asked more than 0.11, so we will include this class also that one also and the last one also because all three are more than 0.11. So the total in this group I am getting 2, then I am getting 4 and then I am getting 2. So the total this many 8 days I am getting where the sulphur dioxide is more than 0.11.
So students, this much is for today. That's next part of this chapter. We will be continuing in the next class. Until then, take care. Keep smiling. Thank you.